in our show, there's the themes are age old, betrayal, yeah. murder, passion, uh, love, triumphs and failures that are very human based, despite the fact that we're able to download our consciousness and put it into anybody that we want, should we be so lucky. Right. <laughs> notion of living in the 25th century, being able to live for 300 or 500 years, would be so ultimately maddening. And, and our anti-heroes really have gone mad with leisure and wealth and excess. And the sort of grand scope that our hero is dealing with, played by Joel Kinnaman, um, is adapting to a world that has changed since he, his cortical oh. stack went down on ice. So I feel like it's one thing to talk about being able to physically move and thrive for 500 years, but I don't know what the human psyche would be like after 500 years. I think that you would be mad. You would well, truly be mad. Your character, for instance, she's been married to this uh, unpleasant man for 100 years. For more than 100 years. So what, what James Purefoy, who plays Lawrence Bancroft, and I spoke of is that, that these two people have utterly accepted each other that they know that they're not all one way and that there's a certain amount of resignation to their lives um, that is like a roller coaster where sometimes you're venerated and other times you're absolutely abhorred. And that is um, just playing the utter complexity of being not just one thing with each other. You'd have to, you'd have, to have that that acceptance, then your en enemy of that acceptance is also discussed with each other. Yeah. So there's, you know, apathy and also acceptance in being married for 500 years or 300 years or, you know. In a way, she's she's kind of trapped in the marriage, in the, the universe that she lives in, mm -hmm. in this technology things. And all she wants is something that's basic and human, and that's love. Yes. So Miriam is is actually trapped also because Lawrence her husband, whose murder we are actually solving right. in the show, uh, does not actually share his wealth with her or their children. So he's withholding in a variety of different ways. And so her way through the world is a resigned um, acceptance of her lot and then this sort of Machiavellian weaving of the desire for power over or attaching herself to whomever she feels is the most powerful. Jockeying to maintain her um, safety through power is really, at the end of the day, what she does. And that's an ages old story too. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me about, without if, if you can tell me without giving away anything, uh, what kind of an arc she develops in this season? I think rather than an arc, it's it's whether or not she's successful in obtaining what she wants, which is um, both safety and power. And the ride that you're on with her is, is um, how she navigates that desire and whether she's successful in getting it. And you'll have to see, you'll have to see. Would you like to do a comedy? Oh, I'd love to do a comedy. <laughs> yes. You do kind of dark stuff a little I'd bit. I'd <laughs> love to do a comedy. I really love I mean, frankly, almost everything I've done, I think, would make a thrilling comedy. Like, Motive, we used to do in between takes. I'm like, this is the best comedy. Shouldn't we just turn this into a comedy? <laughs> like, just we'll do the same lines, but we'll just do it as a comedy. <laughs> just think about it. Or you're watching Altered Carbon. Watch it and get swept up in it, and it's so tense and emotional, now imagine it as a comedy. It's not that hard, actually, to tell you the truth. Because real pathos is also in comedy. That's right. And, yeah. and they say that comedy and, and tragedy are just so close. So close. So close. But yes. it sounds like a great drinking game. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually how lots of actors pass time, actually. That's hysterical. I really mm. like that. <laughs> <laughs>